Hello, this is Steve Rossetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guide to CyberLink PowerDirector. And here we are in PowerDirector 15. One of the new features that has been added in PowerDirector 15 is a very cool feature or actually a whole workspace for editing 360 video. A 360 video is video that, as the name implies, actually surrounds the viewer. And let me show you an example of what 360 video looks like. Here's a 360 video on YouTube. And as you can see, uh, it's usually indicated there in the upper left with this little circle here. And that indicator means that you can actually look around you. And I'm just clicking and dragging on the picture and I can look completely around me, up above me, below me. This is of course shot with a special 360 camera. And as it's playing, we can actually look around us in the video. Now, if you have, or if you're watching this on your phone, you can usually, with a lot of these 360s, there's an entire channel on YouTube, you can actually select the option to look at these in stereoscopic vision. Uh, there's usually a little mask indicator down here, or a cardboard mask indicator, and you get an experience that looks something like this, and it divides your image in half. And in fact, that is ideally stereoscopic, uh, you wear them in a little uh, what's called a Google Cardboard or you can buy these fairly inexpensive or very expensive VR systems. They're just basically goggles that your phone slides into and your left eye looks at the left side and your right eye looks at the right side. And the motion of your head as you're playing this video, if you look left, you'll see left. If you look right, you'll see right. If you look up, you'll see up. You don't have to drag on the picture itself, but the virtual reality experience is built into your phone or it actually uses the gyroscope in your phone to control what you're looking at and you become totally immersed in the experience. Now, there aren't a lot of programs right now for editing this type of video. And in fact, it's actually kind of hard to find this video unless you actually have bought a 360 camera. This is a video clip that I downloaded from a, um, a website called 360IZE, 360Eyes.com, and I'm going to drag it down to my timeline. Now, when I add it to my timeline, I'll get an indicator telling me that there's an aspect ratio conflict. And I'll explain what that means. I'm just going to click on No here, and I'm going to click on Cancel. And so this video won't even be added to my timeline because I want to show you something up at the top you can set the aspect ratio for your video. And in earlier versions of the program, you can set it at either four by three or 16 by nine, which is the standard widescreen. But you see in version 15, we have a couple of new options. One is nine by 16, which is portrait. That's what you shoot when you hold your phone upright. And now there's a new option here called 360. And when you work with 360 video, the program will automatically change the project settings to 360 or you can set them manually. Now, once we've set up for 360, when I drag a 360 clip to my timeline, I may get an indicator saying that there's a frame rate conflict. The settings need to be updated easy enough. Just go ahead and select that. The program will go ahead and interpolate those frames for you. And here is our video. Now our video comes in a couple of views. You notice it looks kind of strange here as we go through it. We're actually looking at the entire video flattened out in our default 2D mode. I think of it like a Mercator. You know how they take a globe of the world and they flatten it out into a flat map. And that's essentially what you're seeing here. The entire 360 video laid flat. Now that's not how it will look when we ultimately output the video, but sometimes it's easier to work on it flat like this as you're doing the basic editing. If you go down here to the bottom of the uh, preview monitor and click on the button that says 360, now we're seeing it in the actual mode the viewer will see it in. You see we have that little circular indicator here in the upper left, which always indicates that we're actually looking at a 360 video and I can drag around in here. It doesn't matter when I'm editing what I see in my preview monitor. I can aim it wherever I want because when the program ultimately generates the finished movie, it's going to generate a complete 360 sphere that surrounds the viewer and the viewer will be able, just as we could on that roller coaster video, the viewer will be able to decide what he or she sees uh, simply by where they point the camera or where they move their head if they're watching it on a, a Google Cardboard or some sort of VR headset. Beyond that, it's fairly simple. Now we edit the video just as we would any other 2D video. In fact, if you want to see another dimension to it, some of these actually include 3D and of course 
um, power director has for several generations had the ability to edit 3d also once you're ready to go you simply choose a produce option and here these produce options know that you're working in a 360 video project and they will give you only options that produce a 360 video we're going to look at that more in part two but here in part one i just wanted to get you familiar with the 360 media and then how it works or how to set it up in your power director project